So the purpose of this uh, chat is to discuss delegated proof of stake uh, as it relates to EOSIO and block production and security and some of the new features uh, in Visiting Vault Tolerant VPOS, BFT VPOS, which we are introducing with delegated proof of stake uh, in EOS. So uh, I'm going to assume there's very little knowledge uh, about how delegated proof of stake works or what even Byzantine fault tolerance is. I'll start by defining uh, the goal. The goal is to decentralize power, uh, make sure that there is no censorship over the inclusion of transactions into blocks, uh, as well as to make sure that everyone agrees on the same order of events. Uh, once you agree on the order of events and you've prevented censorship, then it's just a matter of applying your deterministic state machine to arrive at the consensus state. Um, so there's several characteristics that we're looking for in our consensus algorithms, and that is uh, how, what the latency is until the first confirmation, and then what the final latency is until it's irreversible, until you know with certainty that there's no going back, everybody agrees. So Byzantine fault tolerance is the idea of you being certain that everyone else is certain that you all agree on the same thing. Um, and that if there is any disagreements, like two different groups uh, think that everybody else is on a different point, that would be a Byzantine failure, where half the generals attack and half of them don't, and therefore the battle is lost. Um, so, <clears throat> you would say it's Byzantine fault tolerant if you can generate cryptographic proof of who the Byzantine generals are if you get in that state. The goal is to make sure that, the goal of Byzantine fault tolerance is to ensure that if two different groups reach the conclusion that everyone else is thinking something different, or you have two basically two different consensus states, that's a Byzantine failure. And in order for that to happen, there should be cryptographic evidence of who the parties are at, at fault. And that's Byzantine fault tolerance. Um, and if you have that cryptographic evidence, then you can utilize various uh, systems for penalizing the parties involved. You can cause them to forfeit their bond. You can uh, exclude them from the community. There's all kinds of measures you can remove them from the current set of block producers. All right, we have a Byzantine fault, you're no longer a block producer. Uh, and that sort of forces everyone to behave and to cooperate uh, with the consensus, because if they don't cooperate with reaching consensus, then there is evidence of, of wrongdoing. So I'm going to start with delegated proof of stake, the traditional way that BitShares and Steam do it. Uh, and I'm going to ignore the election process. For now, we're just assume that there's a set of 20-some block producers who have been uh, elected. And once they're elected, they take turns producing blocks. <coughs> um, so we've got this blockchain. Uh, and every... For, I'm going to use Steam and BitShares for starters, and then I'll get into how EOSIO does it differently. Every three seconds, a block producer uh, is scheduled to produce a block. There's only one block producer who can produce a block at that time. Um, and on Steam and BitShares, uh, every round, which is all 21 block producers, we shuffle them. So it might be ABC this round, and then the next round it might be B, C, A, um, and so on um, as time goes. If something happens, um, you could end up with the situation, say B's node goes down. In that case, there's basically a gap. You don't have any block at that point in time. So that's just a regular failure. But there's many reasons it could go down. Uh, the other thing that could happen is uh, B could build off of C, but his block doesn't propagate to the next producer in time. And so the next producer also builds off of C. And then uh, 
the third producer afterward, they kind of break the tie. So the rule of DPoS is the longest chain is the uh, consensus chain. <clears throat> and the reason we can say that is if you've got 21 producers, there's a rate of growth, which is based on how many producers are on that chain. So if you have all the producers, you have max speed. It's growing at one block every three seconds. If you only have half the producers, you're growing at half speed. So that chain's going to be shorter because it's not growing as fast. And so by using the longest chain rule, it works kind of like Bitcoin. You, you know where the uh, consensus is because that's where the majority of the parties are. And that rule works even if you have some kind of massive network split that divides you up into four different subchains. One of them is going to be the longest. And the rule is that if you're on a node, and uh, so let's say you're on this chain here, and you receive another block that builds off of here, you don't switch to this because these two are the same length. The next block comes in. Uh, at this point, this chain is longer. You switch away from this fork, and you switch over here. All right, and so this is DPoS. This is the longest uh, chain rule, and that's the eventually consistent model. This system will work even if only one block producer is operational, one honest one, because that one honest one can support the election that changes the set of producers that elects the new producers until you eventually get back to full speed, uh, which is a nice property to have because it means that the network can continue. With Steam, we introduced a concept called the last irreversible block. And that is the, the block that two-thirds of the other producers have built on top of. So I've got block B, and once I know that B's been built on by C and A, I now have two out of three. I can say that I'm never going to be able to go back beyond here. So even if there's another fork that comes off of here and it's longer, my node won't switch to it because uh, I've already had two-thirds consensus, and the only way that that's even possible is if there's some kind of bad behavior going on. So this protects all the nodes uh, against those types of malicious behavior. They kind of stay with the first thing that they saw the consensus on. And as long as two-thirds are honest, you're never ever going to have this event happen anyway. And what type of attack is that for, uh, trying to, to solve? That solves a lot of the long-range attacks, uh, where um, someone gets old keys that used to be used and then creates an alternative blockchain. Uh, it basically helps everyone agree on what the current chain is. And if I, if I already have agreement, there's no point in me going back. It's, uh, it's a clear sign of attack. Um, it does not solve the new node starting up problem. Uh, but any new node starting up, they have to download the software from somewhere. When they download that software, they're implicitly trusting that single server to tell them what software, what checkpoints, and everything else. And there's lots of other ways that we can verify that you're on the proper chain um, when, you're, when you're syncing. But the way we're planning things for EOS, the vast majority of users won't be downloading a new chain. They'll be using service providers, kind of like Steemit web wallets and the like. And they'll be synced at all times. And so they'll have a recent block, and they'll have peers that they know that they trust uh, to sync with. And, um, and if they're run by experts, you can verify that they're on the proper chain. But generally speaking, those forks won't even be created. They require two-thirds of the block producers, past or present, to collude to attempt to make that happen. In reality, if you have 99% participation, which is the participation rate Steam and BitShares enjoy, even if two-thirds of the old producers do collude, they won't be able to create a chain that's longer than the real chain, which is operating at a faster speed. They'll just never catch up. So DPoS in this mode is very secure. With last irreversible block, it sort of gives us a threshold beyond which we don't have to maintain a rollback or undo states, so it helps with efficiency. So on Steam and BitShares, uh, 
depending state, which is every, every block after the last irreversible block, um, can be 45 seconds on average. That's how long it takes to get 14 out of 21 um, block reducers. Uh, and this time impacts interblockchain communication. 